Hey out there, welcome back. Another edition of the Sons of UCF and a UCF XOS collaboration. We were happy to drag Andy Barch again out of the out of the, the film room for a few moments, and he's gonna join us again here tonight. We're gonna break down the UCF first Navy game. So, first off, Andy, appreciate you coming back for another week, man. A lot of good feedback. People seem to love what you're working on. So definitely appreciate you sharing your insight. No, absolutely. I appreciate it. Having a fun time and uh, you know, just glad to be able to talk football well it wasn't fun andy by the way it was saturday uh ucf uh loses obviously to navy 17 14 and there was a lot to dissect so we're gonna get into the offensive struggles obviously things weren't clicking at all and certain drives so andy's gonna highlight a little bit of that some things actually worked really well i think we'll show some positive plays and kind of give you some some insight of what that lo- what that looked like and then more of a defensive schematic graph will show at the end obviously navy plays a really specific style of offense we could probably play the same play over and over again but andy's going to get more into the x's and o's of, of how to line up against navy and sort of what that looks like so that's what's on tap for uh, for this edition of uh, of the show andy and let's just start here just bigger picture again navy 17 ucf 14 uh was certainly a struggle offensively a lot of the day for for ucf defensively it felt like they pretty much held their own right they you know they give up two touchdowns but you know that field goal is probably a direct reflection of the turnover and and in in that territory uh, side of the field so just give me overall impressions on what you thought first of all just the game plan offensively uh and what you thought about sort of the way it was executed yeah i i thought um you know, I guess I'll, I'll start with the defensive side. I thought our guys played unbelievable. You know, our D-line was really just – our D-line was dominant for, you know, 50 out of the 60 plays out there. Um, they popped off, like, four long plays, one of them first quarter, that long inside trap. Um, they ended up getting one where they kind of scooted out with the running back. He kind of got lost in the shuffle, and then they had, like, another one on the edge out there. But overall defense, phenomenal job. I thought it was great game plan. We did everything right on um, that standpoint, except for scoring points on the offensive side, which to that point, I thought the game plan was fine. We knew what they were going to bring to the table. We knew that it was going to be heavy, heavy on defense. We knew that, or excuse me, heavy on blitz from their defense. We knew that if they were going to be blitzing, we were going to leave those one, one-on-one, those wide open shots. We had guys on the islands. We talked about that last week. We said we thought if we could block it up, we would have a nice field day, go over the top on them. A few plays, we hit them. And then a few plays where we might not have made the right reads. Uh, so overall, I think, you know, we, we saw what we wanted. We think, we think that we knew what the, you know, what was going to happen going into it. Obviously we made a switch at the half. So that was a little bit different than what we were anticipating, but overall, I mean, that didn't change too, too much of what was going on. All right, we'll get into some of those plays specifically. I know, uh, and and kind of the prep for us doing this, you usually send some key, some things that kind of called out to you. Uh, and I want to talk about the first one a little bit because I think it's probably a hidden uh, hidden point that most people aren't talking about that maybe lends a little bit more of you know what happened on Saturday, which was field position. Uh, and that was one thing you called out instantly was just, you know, UCF starting field position uh, and, and Navy starting field position. Just that in general, uh, obviously didn't uh, didn't always land in UCF's favor. What did you see field position wise? Wh- wh- what areas of that are were kind of concerning to you? And do you think led to perhaps what we saw from a result perspective? Um, you know, I, I think it was part of uh, you guys mentioned it last night on the on the Suns live show. Just we haven't been very very strong in kick return the last you know this season maybe even into last season uh this game we start out uh the very first kick return we we fumble a fair catch we have to dive on it on the minus 16 and we end up getting 36 yards or something like that out of that drive uh or maybe 25 yards out of that drive but in reality we stall out on the minus 36 instead of on the minus 45 so that would have been like a nine yard difference right there just starting field position and i think if we were on the 45 instead of the 30 something we would have went for it on that fourth and one to start the game um you know i think we're in a lot better position to go for it right there uh the two field goals in the first half we got it on the 41 and the 45 and then on the other end of half it's two minute drill at the end you know they're dropping eight they're way far back but again we try to bring out a kick and we get to the minus 16 again so it, that really, if we were, again, if we're 10 yards closer, we may be getting to field position for field goal, something like that, and we can get to the half a little bit better. So just overall, I think um, 
he knows those hidden yards. It's it's that third phase of the game that we really don't think about until you get a punt block or something. Does that change how you how you call a, a play, Andy, or, or how you maybe call an offense if you're you know on the on the sixteen versus on the twenty five? I mean, do you think that changes a little bit of, of strategy on on what plays we call, kind of how we call plays? Uh, to me, it does typically. Um, you know, maybe not on the very first series because you have kind of your general your opener script. But for the most part, you're going to have different phases of the field. And I can actually share that graphic with you later. Uh, we can post it online on Twitter. Um, but, you know, the minus, you know, on the minus side of the field, you have your coming out yards, you have your open field yards. And then once you get to the plus side, you, you have your going in, your high red zone, your low red zone. So you just all sorts of different plays, different ideas, different sub packages for where you are in the field. So I think that that definitely plays a big factor into what your decision making is and what your risk tolerance is. Well, this game will be remembered for a few different reasons, right? I think this will, one of them will be the fact that, to your point, we, we made a switch at halftime with quarterback, which is not something we've seen Gus do throughout the year uh, outside of injury that uh, that John Rice suffered against Cincinnati. So uh, the first half and the second half were, were obviously a little bit different. So we'll start off our, our film review tonight, and we'll kind of break down kind of the, the early Plumley side uh, of the uh, of the game here, too. So this is very early in the game. This is 7 nothing. Navy's already driven down and, uh, and taken the ball down the field here. So I'll get a pause here. What do you what do you see in pre snap? Obviously, they, again, this is Plumlee a quarterback. Uh, you know, we're down seven, second and four. Uh, looks like we're at about our own forty five. What are you seeing from a pre snap read as you look at this play here? Yeah, I mean pre snap. You know, we're with the motion coming. You can see kind of that angle walk down. So you're thinking that you're going to have some pressure coming through. You have a, the DBs are staying high, and you're not one hundred percent sure right now the the look if you're going to be getting pressure or not. Um, but that's why you're going through your reads right now because it's you know that they're playing off and inside at the cornerback position, right? So that that's really what you can tell. And you can tell the safeties, they're not going up top. So they're creeping down a little bit. Um, and, you know, the guys underneath, you don't know if they're going to drop out or not because we've seen them drop a little bit. But this is where, you know, your post-snap read comes into play. So you obviously look at the safeties here. One about the – right near the C on hash the UCF hash. logo and the other one a little, little higher on the hash there. And yep. as uh, as you see that motion, man, you see them obviously drop down here too. So, uh, so right there, that's so that's who Plumlee's reading as he's thinking about this particular uh, mesh point. Yeah. So right now, you know, we're we're looking at RPO. Um, we're seeing he's staying up high right there. He's going to be our he's going to be our fitter that we're taking a look at. Uh, also, that D end outside backer, he's kind of hanging off in that kind of he's in no man's land basically right there. He can't really help out in the run. He can't help out in the pass. So we're looking up top. Um, safety, he's sitting high, he's flat foot. So we know that he's not coming down. He's not coming downhill to fill the box for the run. Throw that forward here. See what happens. We get a handoff. Nice little run there. Yeah. RJ Harvey misses a scoot or a nice little scoot there. Okay. What's, uh, what's the next play on this, uh, on this Plumlee drive here? Let me back it up for you. Sorry. Yeah. And so, okay. you know, and then to that okay. point, you know, when you see the flat foot, you know, he's not coming down hard. So that's just a nice, easy give. That's kind of one of those where, you know, we might have missed some of those with Mikey. Uh, JRP, I think, does a phenomenal job of reading, reading the um, the mesh point most of the time. So next uh, next play. So we're looking at it right now again. So we have kind of a heavy box, and we also brought in the extra tight end. So we have the tight end and the wing down there. Um, this, we know that we're going to start trying to pull guys into the box, and now we have RPO. RPO again. This time it's we're going to actually throw it. So what's what's the read? How, at this point, how do you how does JRP know this is a this is a throw ball? Um, it, this you can see that safety uh, who's kind of parallel to the uh, parallel to the kickoff X. Mm -hmm. He's you know so instead of in the last clip when he was flat foot, his feet were side by side. He was flat foot reading. Now you can see he's kind of one in front of the other. He's starting to walk down and he's starting to bring it down. So they're starting to bring more guys into the box as well. So they're trying to stop this run right here. There you see him circled there. Yep. JRP with a nice, uh, nice throw to the outside. Yeah, that's a perfect throw. I mean, you know, it's a long throw too. It's a great ball. All right, next up, what we got here? So we got, uh, I think it's a Ryan O'Keefe on the catch there. Okay. Yeah. 
So now we started rolling. Um, we're kind of in that, you know, we're on the plus 45. We're in that area where we talked about. We're kind of in the going in phase now. Uh, we decide on first down to try to take a little bit of a shot. We think that we can block it up. We saw that they were playing those those guys on islands. They're playing that kind of quarters high, that inside. Um, so we decide that we're going to take that vertical shot on them. And we beat them on the vertical shot. It's just uh, unfortunate we end up having a drop. But this is another great ball. This is at, at this point in the game. Yeah, he was five for six. Um, you know, he only had missed one throw. And this right here, I mean, you know, we end up catching this thing. It, it changes the whole entire game from here. Uh, this is a, a ball that we've seen, you know, at O'Keefe. And we've we've seen our receivers make these types of catches. We've seen them make them last year. We've seen them make them this year. So, unfortunately, it's just one of those things where, you know, we come up a little bit short. It's kind of that 50-50. Uh, but I do like the matchup for us, especially you're putting O'Keefe on a safety. And this is first and 10, Andy. Is there, is there something strategic about if you're going to take a shot, taking it kind of early in a early in a down drive right here on a first down versus a second or third? Yeah, I, I, I think that when you decide to go forward on first, um, you know, you try to uh, – tendency breaker, it can definitely be. You also thinking – where you're at on the field, you also might be able to play with fourth down. So second down, second down and third down, you might be able to call a little bit differently than you would typically. So yeah, it, it's definitely where you're out on the field. That's definitely going to help out your decision making. So very next play now, it's second and 10, obviously, after that's uh, incomplete here. So looks like we got uh, tight end Alec Holler in motion here. What are we looking at pre-snap on, on this next play? Yeah, so we're going to run that split zone like we typically like to do where line's going one way, Holler's going to kick out the backside. Um, where we're going to read this right now is is we're kind of seeing, we're understanding, we're feeling that backside pressure. That's something where he sees it when the motion's coming and that guy starts creeping down. He'd been doing that all game. You know, and we made him look very, very good. <laughs> we we can feel that and we understand that, but we also have to understand where the run is going to be strong, where the run is going to be weak. What he's looking at right now is it's cloudy up top. Um, you have that linebacker who's kind of dropping off again. You have the safety who's staying up high as well along, you know, he's in the A on the hash and it's just, it's not a very clear throw. So this, again, it's a very, very good give read. Uh, we have it blocked up well and, uh, just kind of showing that, um, uh, on Zach's block right there, you know, number one, we end up getting that sack fumble later on in the game because we don't have that kill shot block. But that was just showing right there, really. We don't need that kill shot block if we get the run through there. Because if he runs wide, we can just run it right underneath him. If we stay in the pocket and we start trying to move, that's where that block gets a little bit dangerous. Because he doesn't know that that's going to be a pass. All he knows is, I'm just going to take my zone step and block it out that way. So that's going to drive people crazy, Andy, because you're going to look at this play and you're going to, as, the, as you broke it down, obviously recognize what we saw a lot of the game, right? Like you said, Navy was blitzing. Uh, number one on Navy, I think his last name was Marshall. He looked like Lawrence Taylor out there on uh, on Saturday, right? Yeah. Um, but what you're what you're showing here is obviously a way that we we sort of counteract that with a, with a nice uh, a nice chunk run. But yeah. I think people would say in the second half we got away from the run. Now going into the game, Navy had been, you know, one of the top defenses in the country at, on, on uh, stopping the run. Uh, yeah. But but here, you know, you're you're showing an effective way that UCF kind of used Navy's strengths a little bit against them to, to grab some yards in the running game. I know we'll get to that later on, but why do you think UCF got away from that? Or do you think Navy just made strategic adjustments that that forced UCF to maybe change their mind or change their hand a little bit? Unfortunately for us, I think it's we we didn't execute the way that we should have in the second half. Um, you know, we same play calls on basically the same blitz, you know, it's little nuances here and there different on either side. Uh, but it's essentially the same blitz that we're looking at same looks. And a lot of the time it's just, it's, you know, you get about two seconds to read it correctly. And so a lot of the year, you know, we're running it, we're running it, we're getting those RPOs, we're getting those gives. Cause a lot of the times, um, you know, you'll have teams that are going to sit back because they don't want JRP to take off and run on them. So they would rather play it straight up and try to just handle the running back. So in this case, um, you know, they decided that they're going to try to blitz us out of the RPO, which is fine because we can still handle that. If it's, if we have six blockers, we'll just read the seventh guy. Um, or, you know, seven blockers, we'll read the eighth guy. In this case, they're still trying to blitz us. And we understand that that's going on. They're keeping those guys, you know, like I said, it's a little bit of a cloudy throw up top. It's not exactly the cleanest read for him. So he decided, you know, I'm just going to give it. And that's one of those coaching points, especially for, uh, you know, a lot of quarterbacks, they all want the ball, right? But one of the main coaching points that you can tell those guys is that 
they're never wrong if they give the ball, if they hand it off. You know, they're, they're never going to be wrong on that. Um, we're still expecting to block zone up top or block zone in the box. The offensive linemen, they don't know if it's going to be pass or, or give. All they know is I need to block like I'm normally blocking. And I think that's part of what, uh, you know, why Zach, he ends up being kind of in that weird little space where he's blocking Marshall and Marshall's taking that really wide loop. He's not really sure. All he knows is that, you know, I have to block him because I'm on the outside edge. So, so the, the pass read option here, uh, if I understand you correctly, that, that, that routes the top of the screen. Is that the route that he has the option to throw or can he also throw kind of down to that, to the bottom side of the screen? If he was going to throw to the bottom, that would be a pre-snap read. Um, okay. so that that's his post snap read to the pre-snap read to the field. Um, he, that that's just what you kind of determine usually in the game plan. And then by the look right there, but just for him, he didn't really like the look pre-snap. He would have to, again, also, if you think about where his backside is, he would be able to have to turn pivot yeah. and open back up that way. And so it's one of those, um, you know, you don't, you don't read out of the back of your head. So that's one of those things where it's just that, that's why it's a pre-snap versus the post-snap. Gotcha. Yeah. Hang on again, RJ with a, just a, a fantastic individual effort to, to get to the outside, probably make a little something out of nothing here. Yeah, fight a little, a little bit more. for the first down, right? And and uh, yeah. and make him play for it too. I, I mean, I know I'm asking you to, to kind of you know compare and contrast different kind of running styles, but how is the running in game? How is the RPO game different when it's um, when it's RJ Harvey versus Isaiah Bowser? Um, I don't know if it's too much different as far as what the run game is doing. I, I think that you know Harvey has uh, you know with, without trying to without trying to uh, give each guy, you know, a, a pro or con, I would say that Harvey maybe has a little bit better balance and vision. Um, but Bowser is definitely going to have more strength. He's going to be able to probably fight for those extra two, three yards, uh, towards actually the end of this draft. I think it was, um, this is where Harvey kind of gets stood up on that, on that third and one. And then we end up having to go to the wild Bowser on fourth down. So it, it's one of those things where, you know, Harvey, I think it's five, nine, like one eighty five. you know, Bowser six, two, 210 or whatever it is. So it's, it's strengths, different strengths, different things that you have going on there. Um, yeah. But as, as far as the RPO, as far as the reads, that's not going to change it. It's just going to be, uh, you know, after they get the ball, what's changing. Right, let's take a look at this, uh, this next series of clips here. So this is, uh, uh, this is uh, seven, three Navy at this point, this is uh, second quarter. Um, obviously we are just about midfield a little bit, uh, a little bit shy of midfield here. Uh, what do you, what, what are you looking at here pre-snap? What are you seeing as you look at that, as you look at this? Yeah, we, uh, again, so we're going to motion in, um, we can see they're kind of playing that four across the board, but it's, you know, they're very, very high right now across the top. So again, inside leverage, they're just, their corners are way off. Uh, safeties are way up top too. So we have that little motion through. We're going to run a little bit of a play action and we're going to try to sucker some of those guys down in there. And then again, we're going for a shot play right now. We've released, uh, we released the tight end vertical. So he's trying to eat up the middle of the field. He's trying to eat up that post safety. And then we're trusting our guys on the outsides to win the one-on-one. -on -one. And yeah, you know, great job stepping up in the pocket. It's, uh, you know, you, if this ball, there's a yard inside. That's a walk-in touchdown. Um, one of the things that, it, you know, one of the good things is obviously we do complete it though. And we, and we show them that we can complete it over the top. And so that's just another one of those. It's keeping people back. You're trying to keep people off you. Um, trying to make them respect it. You can see right down there, they're starting to run that. It's not really like a trap too, but it's basically on the bottom side, you can see that linebacker kind of flare out. He's not really interested in the run at all. He's just flaring out for the pass, and he's trying to get into the flats right there. So it's almost like a cover two look. Um, and then, yeah, we just do a good job beating him up over the top. He throws the hand up. Again, stepping into this pocket, knowing that he's probably going to take a little bit of a hit. But that's just, you know, it's a good ball right there. It's a good ball, good catch. You know, like I said, you wish it was a yard inside, but that's, you know, that's kind of one of those things. It's tough to complain when you get that big of a play. Well, yeah. So that's the nuance you're saying is obviously you look at, you know, look at where Baker kind of has to turn his back here now, almost get his entire momentum going towards the sideline there, which is, which is gives the defender just a split second where you're saying at, at this point here, if this thing is just out, you know, out in, you know, towards more the, where the yard markers are listed versus more of the, the hash marks. I mean, this is probably a walk in TD. 
Exactly. Yeah, that's going to be a walking touchdown. And I think that's also kind of one of those from a quarterback standpoint or from a QB coach, offense coordinator standpoint, you know, you're not super upset about that. Like I said, I mean, you wish you had the touchdown, but at least now you're in positive yardage again. You know, you're you're getting close to the red zone. It's also you're happy that you don't overthrow the receiver either. Um, You know, that's kind of one of those. uh, It sounds very, very dumb but it's kind of one of those golden rule things. Don't overthrow the open guy. We've seen that plenty of times, not necessarily just our team, but you see it on Sundays too, where a guy is streaking down the field and you somehow overthrow him. So that's just, you know, give the guy a chance. Well, that was one of the very last throws that we saw from uh, John Rice Pumley. Obviously, he then gets taken out uh, there at halftime, Andy. Uh, a shoulder injury is kind of what we were led to believe. Uh, yeah. You posted on social media today on, on your Twitter, which is at UCFXOS. Um, you showed the clip of the Tulane game where Plumley actually is going out on that fourth and one. Um, definitely uh, makes, a, makes a play on the ball with his right arm, lands yeah. in that shoulder gets up a little bit awkwardly, you know, kind of uh, rummages around a little bit in his shoulder pads, you know, so obviously speculation on our part, that could be where maybe where that shoulder gets dinged up a little bit, but looking yeah. at the film that you saw, did you see anything where you, you know, just from your coaching perspective where you looked at and say, Hey, this looks like a guy who maybe isn't, isn't right right now. I didn't personally, um, you know, the, the throw, the series before the throw where, uh, I think it's to Richardson in the flats. Um, he's trying to hit him. He ends up throwing it low and behind him. And he's getting chased by, you know, he's getting chased right there. I think that that's just, it It comes down to a lot with his base and his feet. Uh, something we've talked about before is, you know, being able to set, plant your foot and step into the throw. Um, you know, maybe it's part of the baseball in him where he gets a little bit over the top and he gets a little bit, uh, you know, over his feet and he doesn't necessarily get to plant and do that. Uh, I want to say like week two or three of the season, he had Holler on an easy touchdown earlier. And and it was one of those where he ends up throwing the ball behind Holler because he just, he doesn't get his feet quite set right there. Um, so that, that happened on drive two and then drive three, he ends up getting a nice ball to Harvey. You know, it's not the most perfect ball, but this would have been a walk-in touchdown on Harvey screen. And then Harvey ends up dropping it right there. So it's just, it, it was like the game was cursed from the start. You know, nothing was going right. Is there something to, again, and we as fans and as, as media, sometimes we, maybe we make a bigger deal of this than it is. You've been coaching, obviously, for, you know, what, 10 plus years, right? So you've been around a lot of football. Is there something to guys throw the ball differently and receivers take some time to adjust to it, i.e., does just JRP have a different kind of spin on the ball, right? Does Mikey have a different kind of lift on the ball? A, is that just a myth that we make up from a media fan perspective, or, or is that real at all? And if so, how big a deal is that as, you, as a receiver or a back? I, I think, you know, by this point in the season, it shouldn't be a big deal. Sure. Um, okay. You know, I, I think that maybe early on, maybe it's one of those things where you just kind of have to start to get used to it a little bit. But eventually it's, it's you know, these guys are big enough, they're strong enough, their hands are, you know, they can they can grip the ball. You see them do the jugs drills. It's um, really the only difference that I've noticed, say, maybe spin-wise is if you're going righty-lefty. Um, sure. But as far as as far as just trying to catch the ball in general, like some of these things, um, it, that that's maybe it just gets more into your head. Maybe it's more on the mental side of the game. But I don't think it physically is going to change too too much. You know, it's that's really going to be you know maybe more the mental stuff. But we know that that's that is another big part of the game too, especially with young athletes. So second half starts and to a raucous applause at the FBC Mortgage Stadium, uh, Mikey Keene trots out to uh, to begin the half. I was yep. at UCF at this point down 14 to six. Uh, you know, field position again, to your point here, we get the ball to 25. So yep. a, a touchback uh, at this point. So Mikey gets a star drive at the 25. Uh, yep. And now again, new quarterback. Um, so A, do you think anything in the playbook changes? So when, when Gus says, Mikey, you're up, are they throwing anything out of the playbook? Are they ripping any plays out? Are they crossing anything off? Or do you think the same playbook is available in, in half two that was available in half one? I, I think the only plays that you're really getting rid of is, um, you know, some of the quarterback run stuff. So, and and that might hurt a little bit of your jet series, your little power sleep series that we were killing too late on. Sure. Um, but overall though, it's, it's, most of the stuff is going to be the same because a lot of the verbiage for the offensive linemen and the wide receivers, we're going to keep that the same. Uh, the only, you know, Cincinnati, I thought in the second half, it was the same playbook. This, this game, I thought it was the same playbook. The only time I really thought it would tailored more towards Mikey was the Memphis game. Gotcha. Okay. So again, Mikey's first snap here again, 15 on the clock. We got a whole new, a uh, whole new set of time here. What yeah. do you see in pre-snap on, uh, on this play? Yeah. Uh, 
running that running that same RPO style. Um, right now we have safety going, you know, kind of he's hard filling down over the top. He's not that flat foot again. We have cornerback. He's bailing out pretty quickly. You can see, you know, he's, you know, his butt is way behind his feet right there. So this is uh, this is kind of one of those quick things. We don't even put it in the ride of the pocket. We just decide that we're just going to rip it and throw. So we don't even give that ride fake. You know, we just know, okay, I'm just getting it out hot right now. We we'll barely catch that one too, by the way. <laughs> a little bit <laughs> that, of a little bit hot a, potato there. So is that, a, is that a read by Mikey then at this point, right? So as uh, I believe that's Harvey, is he, is he reading that right now as, as Harvey's kind of coming down next to him? Is he reading, you know, that quickly to say, hey, I'm going to get this thing out? Like, is he seeing that right here to your point, you know, butt behind toes? Is he saying, hey, this is, this is an easy throw right here? I, I think so. And I think that we also probably talked about that at half just as an offensive staff where, again, they almost go into, you know, 51 when he splits out and jumps out right there. That almost turns into cover two, um, you know, where the corner, it's almost like invert. So instead of the corner taking the flat and the safety over the top, now that corner staying up top and the linebacker, he's going out to the flat. And now we have safety rolling down, basically taking the middle. So it's basically you're moving those three guys' jobs, but it's playing out like a cover two right there. Um, so I, I think that, you know, just looking at leverage, knowing where you're at and knowing that you can get the ball out quick enough, uh, is one of those things. And it's a positive yardage on that, uh, on that first play. What do we got here in second down? Yeah. Uh, second, let me see. Do, 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 do. I think we might actually have to roll this one. I'm trying to think which one this was. <laughs> okay. So again, this is an RPO. Uh, we're reading up top right now. Um, the reason that we're not going to be reading that backside end is we can see haulers coming across on that kick out. So we know that we're protected at that front level right there. So okay. we're reading that second level. So, off, another down. good read. I mean, that's, you know, again, that's, uh, it's funny. Cause you know, after Tulane, people are saying, why didn't we throw the ball more? You know, we ran all over him now after Navy, everyone's saying, why didn't we run the ball more? Um, you know, it, it's tough <laughs> to make everybody happy if, you know, winning solves a lot of different things. <laughs> no, I, it, would, it would be great if it would solve this one. Uh, so uh, there's now third sequence of, of our third play in the sequence here. Uh, first down UCF, obviously now we're, we're creeping closer. I think we're on the 35 here. Uh, again, very similar formation to what we've seen uh, in a few different plays. Uh, what's the what's the read here for Mikey? It's, it's just yeah. straight pass from the start. Yeah. So we, we go into a max protect. Um, you know, we have an eight man blocking. So it's, you know, we have two sides. It's, it's pick your side right now. Um, I think when you're looking at it on the up top, up top, uh, say to O'Keefe, you have one safety who's creeping a little bit down. Uh, on the other side, you have another safety who's a little bit higher. So even though it is a further throw, you do have maybe just a little bit less help up top. Uh, but both guys, they're high and inside. So they're, they're taking it, man. Quick drop. Mikey lets it rip. And look at that. We made a catch. Look at that. Yeah. Much yeah that's a great, ball, great catch. You know, that's a great adjustment, especially coming back from the one that we missed in the first half. Um, you know, that that's O'Keefe is just, you know, he's a great player. So that's just a really, really nice play overall. All right. Now we hustle back now. Now we're on our, uh, you know, basically um, goal, goal, goal in here, right? Goal to goal on this one here on the 20 yard yeah. line here. Um, what do you, what do you got here? Pre-snap. Yeah. Pre-snap again. It's uh, you know, we're kind of in that seven man look. Um, we know that we have the seven blockers and we're going to read the eighth guy. So two receivers outside. And is that eighth, uh, sorry. Is that eighth guy? Number one coming out right there, kind of on the, on the down edge there. Is that the eighth guy you're talking about? Uh, I think on this side, I think we were actually reading the field safety. Okay. So I think we're reading the field on this one. Yeah. We were in the field on this one. Um, yeah. And, and for whatever reason right now, it's just, we, we just really kind of missed the read. I thought, um, yeah, <laughs> we just kind of missed the read and, you know, it, it doesn't turn out very good. So. So I know we talked a lot about and again, this is uh, certainly not meant to be a knock on any one player specifically, but, you know, a lot of the chatter post game uh, and myself included, I was guilty of it. I said that we made number one for Marshall look like Lawrence Taylor out here. And obviously this yeah. is an opportunity for him to get a sack. But as you kind of look at the film right here, you're saying that's an easy you see a little bit of a crease opening up there right about where. Uh, you got a double team up top. I think it's Palua and Swoboda have that have that doubled. Yeah. Uh, you got a guy coming around to to engage the linebacker there. Uh, a nice a crease is about to open up for uh, for RJ Harvey, but yeah. uh, Mikey essentially misreads it at this point. 
Yeah, and and you know, JRP had a few. Oh, look how much room RJ Harvey would have had. I mean, <laughs> He's standing there by himself at that point, right? Yeah, JRP had a great. Uh, you know, he had a few good pull or a few good gives in the first, and then also he had one. It was I think first or second draft of the game um, where he actually, you know, same deal. He kind of gets caught in that bad space, but he outruns number one. You know, and that's yeah. kind of one of those physical differences that we just. Mikey's never going to have that, and JRP is maybe never going to have some of the other traits that Mikey has. Um, but that that's obviously the one really nice safety net if you have legs on the quarterback. <laughs> so what's the coaching point here for for Mikey in film in film room? Right, we, we you know Gus and Chip and you know whoever else put this film on and show Mikey. What's the coaching point here? What, what did he miss that you know again essential we have to clean up uh, for for next time? Keep yourself clean. Uh, I, I think it's you know don't. You don't want to take unnecessary shots. You don't want to get yourself hurt. You you don't want um, you know it's it's you see that it's not necessarily good, and you know that it's uh, the safe play is always going to be the handoff if you have to do it. Right now, I mean, just even this play, even if that safety wasn't blitzing and it was still a ride read, and he was going to pop out and try to throw, it's not a sprint out throw. The pocket is inside, so he starts trying to move off a spot right now, and it's just everything just goes out of whack from the from the start. And he knows it, you know, he knows that he's, he's basically cooked right there. All right. So we lose some yards second and 18. Now uh, we get yeah. a chance to regroup here. Let's yeah. Look pre-snap on, uh, on what you see here. Yeah. A little bit more conventional defensive look this time. Um, you know, only three down. It's, it's a lot lighter box than what they were just showing us. Not those same blitz looks, um, you know, kind of, and we're, it, all is forgiven basically right because we we have you know you go from a negative play but then we're doing the mikey things that the reason that you put him in at a half and the reason that you thought you were putting him in at half is to be able to start carving him up top so again nice time. clean pocket you know they only rush three they're in that drop eight again um you know when when that happened this was nice and easy because we knew our athletes even with that like 12 yard head start our guys were yeah. still beating him over the top yeah, and I wish obviously the you know the TV angle doesn't show exactly the you know every trajectory of the route here. But I think what's what's interesting is you know that old saying football's a game of inches, right? I mean, this throw looks very similar to the throw JRP made, you know, yeah. in the first quarter to to O'Keefe. Again, yeah. kind of over over the head of the defender. You know, the is gonna have to make a fairly athletic play, but something that you know we've seen our t- our guys do before. You know, in this situation, Javon comes down with it, you know, carries it, yeah. survives the ground touchdown. You know, the the play earlier, obviously in the first half, uh, O'Keefe doesn't come down with it. And that's just a few inches, man. I mean, it's it's almost, you know, a very similar throw if you really look at it. I know the distance is a little bit different. I think JRP is a little further out, but you know, very similar throw and concept on this one, uh, just a matter of inches. Absolutely. Absolutely. Game inches. We, you know, like I said, if we if we could protect it, we knew where we were going with the ball. We knew that that was the game plan is go over the top. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where it, unfortunately we just didn't always complete those. Uh, but it, it, you know, that that's why I thought uh, when we were talking about execution versus game plan, you know, it's like I don't think anything was wrong with our game plan. I just think it's, you know, a few of the plays just didn't break our way. All right. So uh, now we've got to get to some of the other stuff. Obviously, Mikey, that was a really good first drive. Um, you know, the shot in the arm that uh, that the offense maybe needed, we all thought at that point in time. Uh, defense came out, again, continues to, to do their job. Uh, JRP actually comes back in, uh, bum, shoulder and all, throws a two-point conversion. So we're level at 14. And at this point, you're thinking, okay, now now we're getting it figured out. All right, we got, you know, we got something figured out. We, we, we're, we're kind of making our moves. Uh, so Mikey stays in the game here. And uh, here's just a couple of throws. It just, overall, again, I'm not an analyst, so I'm going to rely on you to, to coach me through this. It felt like there was just something a little bit off with the connection between Mikey and the receivers. Again, I don't know what that is. Perhaps I'm making that up, but I know you've got a couple of throws here uh, that, that you've labeled kind of misses that I'd love to get your expertise on kind of what you're seeing schematically um, from this standpoint. So here's one, obviously it looks like we have a little bit of a, a, a jet motion coming through. What are you seeing on this one as, uh, as the play starts to develop? Yeah. Navy go, they go back to their blitz. Look, um, they're, they're, they were really blitzing off our jet blitzing off our motion. They decided that that's what, that they were going to start keying some of that stuff. So as soon as this comes across, you know, we can see the edge guy. I mean, one, he's really not trying to hide it. You know, they're, they're trying to show us some pressure looks. Um, I, I think it's just, you know, dating back to last year a little bit too, and dating, you know, to, we saw it a little bit with Cincinnati. We saw it a little bit with Memphis. 
you know, when things get close to you in the pocket and it gets hard to step into the throw, you know, you're going to eat a shot. Um, I think that that's where sometimes you have a tendency to start falling off your back foot. And that's where you, uh, you know, you don't always step into it because you know what's coming for you. And granted, I mean, I trust me, I know that that's scary. That's tough. That's part of the job as well, though, is knowing that you're taking that that gut punch and you're going to get a little bit winded. But to be fair, at this point right here, as, as a fan, I'm looking at this this screen grab right here, and we've got we've got Marshall on the outside, number one for Navy, and it looks like and it's Bowser squared up. Looks like Bowser's got this thing. Yes, they they brought pressure, but it looks like we've got to protect it appropriately. And yeah. it, it's just a simple juke move, you know, yeah. right by right by Bowser. So when you talk about game plan versus execution, is this something you're talking about? Where hey, we had it, we had it schemed up. We had a hat on a hat right here. We had the ability to to keep this guy off, Mikey, keep the pocket clean, maybe. maybe make a play but one quick little juke move and before you know it now it's a jailbreak to the quarterback yeah you know we we had seven blockers on the play um you know you really can't ask for much more than that we have seven we have the outlet throw right there to the jet you know we have o'keefe and that little dump off if we want to dump it um you know we decided to lock on because we thought we would be able to get that whole shot and we do technically you know we have it it's just you know one more yard on the arm it's uh you know yeah. that's good completion Hey, and not to, this is not meant to put folks on blast here, but Alec Holler gets beat a little bit on that inside too. So as two guys come through, you'll see Marshall, you see Holler kind of get beat a little bit. Yep. Uh, and then Mikey still, to your point, still has an opportunity to get that completed, right? It, it's, he still yep. got it out there. Maybe a bit of a dangerous throw if you don't get all your arm on that or, you know, someone gets you a little bit sooner, right? Could be a dangerous throw, but uh, you know, we live to fight another day. Uh, and, and then we, we go on to this play here. So what do you see in pre-snap on this one again? Now Navy's taking the lead. So this is already post fumble. Uh, so yep. this is our post fumble and, and field goal. So now we know we're, we're playing back from behind uh, about eight minutes to go in the third quarter. What are you seeing on this read here? Yeah, I, four across deep. We have everybody coming up at the line. We're, we're showing kind of that little creep off the uh, slot. Um, but really, you know, where you would think a traditional backer would be, probably standing right on the 30-yard line, you know, they don't have that right now. They're, they're showing us up at the line. Um, so you're thinking, you know, hey, either pressure's coming, obviously, or they're going to drop out of it. Um, so they're communicating, they're talking up at the line. You can kind of see the right guard and stuff. They're, you know, they're shouting back and forth. I don't know necessarily what it, for our offense. I don't know necessarily who has the calls on protection. If it's the center, or if it's the quarterback, you know, typically it's going to be one or the other. It looks uh, like Mikey's making some sort of a uh, a motion here to his head there. I don't know if he's checking into something. Yeah, he's giving that little easy check. I don't know if we were calling off maybe a play action or what exactly we were calling off there, but there is a communication right there. You know, the, the Peyton Manning, the, the Omaha. The- Omaha, sure. <laughs> and then play it forward here. So put yeah. a holler in motion yeah. and we stop here. So Navy essentially is sending everybody that was on the line. So nobody drops out. It looks like on this one, it uh, looks like we've, we got a little bit of a, I don't know if we're going play action here, but what's, so what's kind of the read as, as the play develops, where, where should Mikey be looking with this ball? <laughs> Um, I think right now he was looking to the right. You know, you have your two eligible receivers over there. You motion taller over. Uh, yeah. As soon as he motioned over, that linebacker who was on the who was on the line, he dropped off. Looked like he's zoning off, and then the safety he stepped down and he's going to start covering. Uh, he's going to cover Holler as soon as he crossed the center. So we have a guy who's trying to cover him from top down. Holler's kind of running a little out, and then as soon as because we're on the short boundary side, he's going to bend it up, and then we'll run in the post. Uh, I don't know if that's okay for Baker. I think it's Baker, but Baker's running the post. So he's going outside in and then we have Holler who's going inside out. So right there, I mean, potentially we could have had a completion right there. Or if we wait a second, step into it, knowing that he's climbing because the other guy, because that safety is coming down his momentum, he's losing leverage because he's not playing it very well. He's kind of chasing it from behind and then he's tailing him back. So we left him. I mean, you know, again, yeah. this is tough. It's we got pressure. Um, you know, it, it's one of those things. So that's why I'm saying, you know, if we throw it a little bit earlier, you know, we catch it for six yards in the flat. Hey, that's a positive play as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can see here, Mikey's already getting, getting crunched and Holler's just about to take that upfield. So that would have had to have been a nice little trust throw. Uh, yep. it, and so does some of that though come Andy from, again, I, I don't want to keep harping on the quarterback stuff, but does this come from, Mikey not getting as many reps maybe with Holler throughout the week. If JRP's QB one, is it, is this like an instinctual thing that, you know, if you, if you had a full season, I know I'm asking you to predict the future and crystal ball this, right. But is this something that a connection quote unquote is just formed that the more that guys get to play together? Um, you know, it, maybe, um, uh, but I, I would honestly, I would put this more towards his trust in Baker than anything else. Um, 
you know, Baker's a, arguably probably our best wide receiver this year. Uh, you kind of, you see the coverage that's happening and Baker bends it underneath the safety. So this is, um, it ends up being, you know, I, I'm not going to call it the wrong decision, but what I, you know, just pointing out that he had that potential kind of like he did in uh, the Cincinnati game as well, that maybe that game ender that he could have had. Yeah. So it's just one of those things where, you know, maybe if you see it a little bit longer, if you wait another second, you know, again, though, maybe he can't get that ball off this ball. I mean, if it's just a little bit better, if it's tighter thrown, um, you know, it's completion into Baker and we're going, we're moving the chains. It's 14 yard throw. Um, yeah. So it, it's just one of those things where it, it was close. You know, again, yeah. it's close, but it's just it's a little bit off. Well, let's talk about the blitz pickup here. Again, we talked a lot about the blitz, right? But, you know, if you look at this and run this forward, I mean, essentially it's a, you know, it, there's 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 two guys on that side. Looks like a third guy. So a boat is about to engage with there yeah. from a from a blocking perspective. Is this is this a miss? Or should we have slid somebody over? Is this kind of a miss in protection? Because you look on the left hand side there, left tackle, Tylen Grable is, is essentially blocking air at this point. Right. So is this a miss from maybe sliding protection? Yeah. See, I, I, I don't know if, if that motion, if that, if that killed our protection that we initially called, um, you know, cause that end was over on that side. So I don't know if that changed our protection, what our call was, you know, it's almost like we're, it's basically what you would call solo blocking, you know, Harvey's taking that solo edge blocker and, uh, you know, backs and tight ends can typically take linebacker safeties, whomever that's fine. But when you start taking D ends and stuff, that's where it gets to get a little bit hairy on the blocking side. So I, yeah. I, you know, as soon as they bailed out, should we have bumped over? I mean, we probably should have had a push call, but that's just being that snap motion over there. It's, sometimes it's tough to get that communication. Yeah, I think that's when, you know, the, the lay fan like looks at this and says, OK, we got one guy running free and one guy blocking air <laughs> like yeah. that's got to be that's got to be a coaching, but that's got to be a breakdown. And that's when you talk about execution. That's that's what you're referring to, right? That the play call itself here, if that's blocked up to your point, you maybe have holler on a, on a, on a nice, you know, uh, you know, upfield throw there. You know, you, you get a, a second, uh, another second, maybe you get a better ball to Baker. But this is kind of when you say execution, it's little things like this, right, that you think kind of thwarted us to have. Have really good opportunities on uh, on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, you know, the the plays are inherently just the plays. You know, it's the you know it's the the guys who are making them happen. It's uh, you know, the same Navy team that lost to Delaware in Week One is the same Navy team that beat us, and they're running the same exact plays that they had in Week One as they do in Week Twelve. So it's uh, you know, it, for them too, it's the execution. It's not just the game plan because <laughs> their game plan is going to be the same anyways. It's going to be control the ball, run the ball. All right, third quarter winding down again. We are uh, we are on uh, R thirty here. Looks like we got another one of those jet sweep uh, motion situations. Bowser appears to be in the backfield at this point here. Uh, what's the read on this? Uh, again, I'll point out bottom right of your screen. You see number one from Navy again, pretty much living in that territory all day. What's the, what's the read on this one? Yeah, again, I think he's triggering off the jet. Um, we have a little bit of a of a read right now. It looks like uh, you know balls hanging out there. And so it looks like we're going to try to ride read it. Uh, and he's looking, I think he's looking linebacker to safety right now. Is that what his read is? So is this one, obviously we're, we'll play it forward here and you'll see yeah. Lawrence Taylor Jr. There. Um, is this another one that in, in hindsight you would kind of recommend, Hey, th this is, this is another one that probably needs to go to the back. Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised that, you know, for, for a few different things for uh, if you rewind it just a little bit, from what we talked about before where he's basically, you know, his back is, you know, his back is right. And then he's going to try to pivot and then throw back over to the right. So he's mm -hmm. basically trying to read out of the back of his head, which is not easy to do. And uh, you know, he has guys flashing across his face right there. I mean, it, up top, you can see the safety who's creeping over there. You can see that flat, uh, the defender who's also, so there's the two defenders right there that are on the 40 and the 35 mm -hmm. and they're out to the field. I mean, those guys are out of the run fit. Number one, he's way out of the run fit. We're running over to the right. If we just hand that ball off, I mean, again, I, I can almost guarantee that's going to be positive yardage. Who's who's he throwing to here? Like, who's the is he, is he trying to get this ball over the middle to? I think that's Kobe Hudson. Is that the is that the actual target here? It, I think that's who he was going to right now. Um, and that that's part of one of those things where I don't know the miscommunication was off. It, something happened where you typically aren't going to be throwing it off your backside like that and trying to read out the back of your head just because, you know, you can't do it. Um, yeah. it that's why it's kind of pre-snap, post-snap. And so I don't know what he saw 
pre-snap that uh, that would make him think that because normally if you are going to pre-snap throw that you just open up immediately you don't try to ride fake it do any of that stuff um you just want to get the ball out fast so that's well so you've said this a few times and probably somebody watching this is yelling at their computer or their phone screen to have me ask you this question so i'll do that now you've yeah. mentioned a few times that the jet motion is probably triggering the blitz on that on that bottom side right number one marshall to blitz so the question is we've seen that now a few times should UCF go away from that? If they know, hey, if we do that, they're going to blitz that. Do you either A, go away from it, or B, adjust to it and figure out how do we how do we get somebody over there to uh, to essentially thwart the blitz on that side? Yeah, I mean, I, I think adjusting to it is, uh, you know, probably more the valid answer than stopping what you're doing. You know, you're going to do what you do well. So I think adjusting to it is probably the better option. Um, having said that, though, you know, if we hand the ball off right there, it's, you know, we're just fine. It's uh you know, we hand the ball off right there. We kind of got that trigger that we wanted to, you know, that guy, he's way out of it. He's not going to chase it down from the backside right there. So, you know, we, I, I don't think, again, it's, I don't think we, I think we called it thinking that we were going to execute that a little bit differently. <laughs> So what would the adjustment be though on that? So if, if we knew that on jet, they were going to sort of fire that guy off the line, what would the adjustment have been? Yeah. So we tried to throw a lot of screens off it too. Um, okay. You know, not, not that we highlighted it. We tried, we did try to throw a lot of the screens out there, a lot of tunnels and stuff. And then unfortunately some of our linemen, we just, we missed some of those blocks in space as well. Cause we were trying to screen underneath it. Um, we knew the edge blitzes were coming and that's a great way to neutralize it. And so, I mean, I think we threw about five or six screens in the second half. It just didn't do a whole, whole lot for us. Um, so yeah. that that's one way to do it. Um, to your point, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess if you're thinking that that's going to happen, you stop running the jet over there if you don't think you can block it. But again, it's if you think that you can jet out wide and you're going to pull people away for the eye candy, just run right underneath it. All right. So now we're fourth quarter, six minutes to go. Still time to obviously, um, you know, put some points on the board. It's uh, again, still 17, 14 Navy at this point here. Uh, yeah. Mikey, obviously still a quarterback here. Uh, I think I can pause it right about here. Uh, what are you seeing pre-snap? Obviously it looks like on the, on the top side there, you got some guys creeping down. What are you seeing pre-snap? Yeah. Top and bottom. You see uh, the, those two linebackers. I mean, anytime guys are stacked like that off each other, you know, that's usually a pretty big tell. Um, you know, so you could see off the field side and on the boundary side, number one, he's coming from the boundary and on the field, we had somebody else as well. And it's just, you know, again, they weren't really hiding it. They knew, um, you know, if they're going to block that, if they're going to blitz that many, they know that we're basically, we're going to have to get the ball out fast. And that's kind of what they were anticipating is that, uh, you know, they could play top down from the cover side, knowing that the ball is going to be a little bit quicker. So that time, I mean, you know, blitz doesn't even get home, but it's tough because it's not Mikey's game, but if this was JRP in this situation, I mean, he's probably taking this thing off for 25 yards. It's uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker. I, you know, I like that matchup a lot for a runner. Um, this, we decide to pull up and throw it. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can see his feet aren't necessarily underneath him either. That's not an easy throw what he's doing. As a receiver, what do you, what are you taught to do here? And again, I, I honestly don't know, so I'm asking this question here, right? So I don't know if I can frame it up here. You see, you see your quarterback kind of on on scramble mode here. Are you taught to kind of go back towards your quarterback? Are you taught to kind of like stop and just make yourself a big target? And I ask that question because it looks like I think that's Alec Holler. Maybe I can't really tell. That maybe uh, that maybe Zach Marsh Wojan kind of running away from Mikey as you kind of see Mikey beginning that that scramble part. As a receiver, what are you kind of taught to do in this scenario? It's going to depend on your position to the field. Um, you know, if you're the close guy, if you're the close guy, like right there, yeah, you're going to want to try to pull your defender away or you're going to try to, you know, give them some room, kind of like in basketball. You don't want to clog up the lane right there if it's fast break or something. Um, yeah. If you're the far guy, though, if you're like way too far and you know he just can't make that throw because he's on the run, then, yeah, you're working back. And then if you're on the other side of the field, if you're on the left, like we have the other two receivers, now you're basically trying to work over right to the right side. And you're trying to work across yeah, and you're trying to do everything you can just to become a target. You know, the play is off from there, basically. And you're just you're not running your route anymore. You're just trying to run jailbreak and get back over there um, to the opposite side. If you're you know, if the ball is breaking to the left, if pockets breaking to the left, that throw, that angle, everything's going to be probably a little bit flatter because you just have to pivot your you know, you got to pull your body and pivot the other way. Uh, when you're drifting to the right, balls tend to sail over to the right, uh, especially deep. So, yeah. But that's that's a lot. Uh, most of the time, you are going to work some sort of scramble drill in practice. So yeah. typically, they do try to get you know 
they do try to get that work in, especially if it's like seven on seven shell. Um, they're going to start running a lot of those just different scenarios and things. Well, again, I think the other thing we talk about the line play, right? So you see, obviously, we we pick up the the top and the bottom, kind of push those guys a little bit away from Mikey. He can step up, but then you see, I mean, the lines kind of getting pushed back in into in, into Mikey. It just felt like all day the line was just getting a little bit of extra push on the defensive side that just kind of gets in Mikey's way and his feet. And obviously, at this point now, he's he's got no choice but to you know to abandon the pocket, right? Because he's feeling all that pressure in his face at, at that point, right? Yeah, yeah. It, um you know, and, and that's, that's the issue with pressure teams. It's, it's their, they're really boom or bust. It's like a casino for them. You know, they're, we saw against last week against Notre Dame where Notre Dame puts up like 32 points on them in the first half and then puts up only a field goal in the second half. And that's what they were doing. The same exact stuff to them. They were fine getting beat over the top once or twice. Um, but then in the second half, they were just, they were doing the same exact thing to them. They're playing these games, they're blitzing, they're, they're bringing people from all over the field. And it's sometimes it's tough to predict exactly how it's going to work out for them. All right. This one is, um, uh, I think it's out of order here. Um, uh, this one is, uh, what do we have this title that? I think it's uh, maybe one that should have been a fourth down stop, I think is what you have this, uh, what you have this kind of signal as to. So, um, yeah. So this is kind of that crunch time in the game where, uh, you know, they, they start extending a drive right here. This would have been a pretty prime position. It's third and five. Um, defense overall, again, I thought defense really did a great job stopping them. Um, they have wide receiver split out. They have, they have uh, you know, they, their regular flex bone formation, and we have our nose on it. We Barber was doing a great job. Unbelievable. He was getting chop blocked illegally. I saw, yeah, those clips he put on I, social media. Again, if you follow Andy on UCF XOS, I mean, you, you had four pretty blatant opportunities for for chop blocks. Which, to be fair, so people who who don't know that that that's a flag, correct? You can't correct. you can't engage somebody low when they're already engaged high like that. Correct, exactly. So you can cut block all day. Um, you know, we I, I think every program in America has a cut block built into their blocking system on quick pass. Like if you're throwing a quick slant, quick screen, that type of stuff. Just about every team in America has a cut block somewhere built into their blocking scheme. Uh, but yeah, to your point. If I'm getting blocked up top and then somebody else is chopping out my legs, um, that's a lot like the defenseless receiver rules where the guy, he's reaching up for the ball as he's getting smoked down low. I know I'm asking you now to become uh, Mike Pereira here for a second, right? But, I mean, you you know Navy, obviously, as, as a team that's going to cut block. Is this not something that, you know, Gus goes to the officials before the game and says, hey, are we going to watch for this today? Like, if, if any team that you know you have to be on kind of quote-unquote high alert for potential for something like this to happen, it would be Navy. Yeah. Any explanation from your view on, on how some of that could be missed? I think because a lot of their blocks and a lot of the stuff just happens so fast. Um, you know, it's kind of like how we don't get a holding on every single call, even though there is a holding somewhere. Sure. Um, it, it's just one of those things that just, it, it happens very, very quickly. Um, so I think that that's probably why you don't get a lot of it, but you could see Gus in between, whether it was the timeouts or in between plays, the one of them was really bad where T will and the rest of the defense guys are jumping up and down. Cause he could have snapped, uh, could have snapped, um, excuse me, Ricky Barber's leg. Uh, so it's just one of those things where they were asking for it and we just never got it. All right. The other question I know a lot of people are, are asking or wondering, right? We know Navy obviously has more propensity to run the football, right? Uh, yet, if you look at the top of the screen, we have our corner about 10 yards off the receiver. And obviously we have those kind of two middle safeties. Uh, what is that? About 15, 10, 15, 12 yards back. Why not have those guys closer? What's the schematic advantage? I know it's third down, by the way. So you have to always kind of just respect the pass just in case, right? But um, yeah. why not Why not bring any of those uh, any of those three or four guys closer to the line? Um, so we have, so the way that we're playing it, we kind of have like, uh, what we call four eye. So they're just in shot inside shade of the tackles, the two DNs Then we have a zero technique nose. Uh, what they're trying to do is chip out the tackles. And then we're trying to two gap the nose. Um, the two stand up ends, they're coming down the two outside backers. They're going to play either side. And then the inside backers are taking the dive. So the safeties they're they're busy. They're trying to run the alley off the pitch. So they're, they're not designed to try to get into the fullback. Their design is that they need to cover the over the top and get wide to the edges. Which obviously yeah. in this one, a uh, chance to, to make a stop there, but uh, just, yeah. a, just a missed tackle. Again, we talk about game of inches here, right? Like but at a TFL. Right, right there. I think that's Devontae Brown, if I can see the number correctly. Yeah, seven. Uh, I mean, that's a TFL on a third and five, right? That, that'll make it third and seven, third and eight. 
you know, probably not a spot where Navy wants to wants to go for that right a little bit too far. You know, yeah. you know, can't kick from there too, kind of no man's land. So probably one when they end up hunting, but squirts yeah. away. Yep. And uh yeah, they got fourth and one on the you know on the plus side of the field and they're going for it. So all right, we got one clip, Andy. I don't know if I like this already. Uh, you're getting a little bit a little bit cute on me here. You got one <laughs> clip that you sent me here. You labeled it quiz for Adam. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I guess I'm on the hot seat here. I guess uh, UCF Mike style, I'm on the hot seat. Um, yeah. <laughs> what's what's my quiz here? What am what am I doing? I, I haven't studied for anything. You know, I had like eight plays. or nine Bud Lights today. I gotta I gotta focus here. What am I looking at? <laughs> Two plays back to back. We've already seen this play, and then the uh, then the next play following is uh is the sack play. Um but this is, uh, yeah, it's okay. It's two, RPOs, we saw earlier. two RPOs with two very different results, basically. Okay. So I'm, I'm supposed to see what, what happened differently here. Yeah. We're kind of going over. All right. What the the yeah. All right. I like what I'm saying here. Good motion. I like that. Okay. We got blocked it up nicely. Okay. That guy came down. All right. All right. I feel good now. Yeah. All right. Let me pause this here. Okay. looks like, okay. Where am I going here? All right, Holler's coming in motion. Holla, okay. He's going to dive in a little bit. Yeah. What do we miss? Oh, I mean, it's just a bad block. No, I mean, it just feels like feels like we got burned on the outside. Am I wrong? Well, and, and kind of besides the obvious of the sack fumble and the difference in the other one, how we have the completion, um, this is a lot of when you're in the RPO game and you're playing quarterback, you have a lot of responsibility. And part of your responsibility is making sure that we're getting in and out of a good place. Um, you know, I know that that sounds like a lot to the outside person, but that is the job of the quarterback is you, you have to know exactly which way are we running things, which way are we, you know, which side is your read side, your pre-snap, your post-snap. You have to know what every single person's assignment is on the offense. That's just part of the job. Um, when we're looking at the first play, um, we're looking at the first play. We, we see that we're going zone to the field. Um, basically, if you run this back one more time, you see a big difference at all. Let me get you there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. What, I see what you're saying. So we're we're going now to the to the short side on the field in this one. Well, we just kind of flipped it, but so like right now on on this one on the sack fumble, we do send we do send Holler across right now. So we have that split zone, yep. and on the and on the very first play, we're actually not motioning anybody. We're just stagnant. So we have double tight end as opposed to this one where we still have a tight end left. Well, Andy, this brings me back to my question again. So again, it looks like if I heard you earlier, maybe again, this is just as this was the design all along. Right. right. So if you, if you kind of run this back when, when Holler's in the slot here. Yeah. So if Holler stays as is and yeah. doesn't motion, I mean, I know it's hard to judge, right? It looks like looks like Marshall number one. Looks like he's he's on his. He looks like he's ready to fire a little bit, right? So it's possible he was always blitzing, but then you see the jet sweep motion. Now you see him definitely commit to the blitz at that point. Do you think again, coaching point? Whenever they run that motion, Marshall, you go ahead and just head for the quarterback. Yeah, I, I think that that was in their game plan for sure. Um, you can see the other linebacker, the inside linebacker. He's triggering off Holler as well. Uh, we we call that um, kind of the sniffer, and. So he's that, you know, he's behind the play. He's behind the lineman. And so they were coming down to fill um, in case it was same side action right there, same side zone. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they were triggering off that to your point. You know, if we don't motion that, probably don't get a sack fumble either. Uh, he might be able to dig out Marshall and uh, and make that block right there. Um, you know, kind of kind of leading to the first one, you know, he goes quick trigger. He throws it. Yeah. The second one where we're looking at right now, this is – this is what I, I personally don't like with this is they're dropping, they're dropping out that, that outside linebacker again. So again, it's playing out like cover two cornerback is high and inside, but we see that safety. If we rewind it to the beginning of the play, that safety who decides to creep down now, who's sitting right on the logo, he's on the, he's to the left of the play, right? So he's to the left standing next to the ref. Now he starts creeping all the way down, but where he's at right now, he's still not, really in the run fit and where he's running is he's looping outside to the d we have 51 he's backing out of it too and we have zone that's going field left i mean if we hand that off which we probably should hand that off obviously in hindsight we should have handed it off <laughs> again this is one of those plays where i think bowser can can really start to break loose again go for a nice yeah. run 
And again, well, I mean, so that's that's a really fair point, right? Because obviously, a lot of people, just like I did, I jumped on the fact that um, Zach Marshawosian, you know, d- didn't didn't get uh, set the block. edge really well, he did a good block, right? But to your point, that's not even important. If if this ball's handed off right here, you know, Zach Marshawosian is a hero for pushing this guy outside and, and giving uh, you know Bowser you know more room to to make that run at this point, right? Yeah, and for, and for him, he has no idea that he has to do a pass set right there. You know, he he has to get into a pass block. He has no idea. He just knows that he has zone blocking rules. That's all he knows because it's the RPO. Um, you know, he learns pretty quickly as soon as he starts looping out. You know, something's going on backside. I don't know what it is, but something's going on, and he's kind of diving and lunging. Uh, if you go back to the very first, uh, go back to the first play. So we talked about the safety was rolling away from where the run is going. This play right now, when we uh, when we run it. You see the linebacker and the safety. That linebacker is now filling towards the run. So that's kind of one of those, uh, you know, it's a difference right there. You know, it's subtle. It's tough to notice if you're not necessarily looking for it. Um, but that that is kind of one of the two big differences. And, again, that safety, he's rolling out. He's vacating the middle of the field. Um, yeah, if we hand the ball off, I think we're all right. Let me ask you another technical question. I know this is impossible to ask, but I'll, yeah. I'll be the the dumb idiot fan guy. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, one of the knocks on Mikey has been his release point and how sort of low he throws the football. As you yeah. see him kind of getting out of the pocket here, um, you know, again, he, he's typically kind of throws more winding motion. It's probably impossible, right? But does the fact that he kind of throws some of that motion, so at this point maybe he's, he's kind of firing up the throw and he's comfortable with the ball that low, that loose, is that like, does another quarterback who maybe is a little higher with the ball, maybe a little tighter with the ball, maybe that doesn't become a fumble? Potentially. Um, but one of the things, you know, and, and to, to his credit, we shouldn't be getting that pressure on the backside. You know, we, sure, we just, sure. we know that we're supposed to be getting blocked to the D gap on the front side as we have the tight end. But one of the other things we talked about it in one of the earlier plays where he scrambles out of this pocket, like it's not designed for him to scramble out and, Say if he never gets sacked from the backside, we have that safety who's rolling down. That guy's going to smoke him in the front. So it's, you know, I know things break down. It goes into a fire drill and everything gets a little bit crazy. Everything, you know, the game is moving lightning fast. Um, Reality is, is that neither one of those two decisions was a good one. And then you see Bowser in the middle, you know, he's running right down the Well, Yeah, this is a much better look, right? So if that handoff happens to Bowser, uh, I mean, he's got room service uh, on his way potentially for a nice chunk play, a nice gain, obviously. And as it turns out now, hindsight, of course, this turnover really made the difference, right? This was, you know, we gave them the ball back and and plus territory, you know, they they chip shot a field goal in and, and we go down and we can't, we can't make any. Uh, and anything happened offensively at the time we all go okay crappy turnover let's get this one back now in hindsight this becomes the de facto biggest play of the game right because we essentially gift them three points at this point exactly they don't even move the ball but they're able to kick the field goal right there again even if uh even if he doesn't get chopped out from behind with that strip sack i mean the safety 11 he's still rolling in the front i mean he's probably going to hit him in the front anyway so it's it's knowing where your protections are knowing which way the run is going knowing that the run was going to the left and the safety's rolling to the right he's rolling opposite so again if we hand that off and we're okay doing that that's that's going to be a pretty good run so if i hear andy's advice correctly here it's it, it, when in doubt, hand the ball off, right? Exactly. Nothing bad is going to happen. You're going to maybe get no gain, lose a yard. Nothing bad is going to happen. Hand the ball off, go back to the huddle, and, and try another play, right? Sounds like that's that's kind of the coaching point. If I, if you're Gus Malzahn talking yeah. to Mikey after the game and you're looking at the film, you're going, son, just hand this thing off next time, and we'll get it figured out. We'll regroup for the next play, right? Don't put us in, in negative territory. Don't turn the ball over. Hand the ball off. We lose one or two. We gain one or two. No big deal. We move on. And I, I think it's, what is that old, uh, I don't know, that old adage from like the 40s or whatever. It's like the the three things that can happen with a pass and, you know, incompletion, uh, interception or a sack. You know, when yeah. you're running the ball, really, it's, you know, you're going to, you know, th- there's not too many variables with the run. Um, the hardest thing right now, though, is with that, you don't want to break a quarterback's confidence. You sure. always want to treat them that they're correct, whether it's right or wrong. They, whatever decision they make, you need to live with that decision because he's now the guy under center. Um, you know, unfortunately, we just, we didn't always make the best one. You know, I think, again, in hindsight, it's, that's the hardest thing is you look back because you know the end result versus when you're in the moment, you're thinking like, oh, we'll be all right. We'll just get him next series. Yeah. 
Well, Andy's a full service operation, folks. So not only is he a video clip guy, now we have diagrams. We have charts here at the UCF XOS uh, breakdown situation here, Andy. Uh, I, I got mesmerized by the taco here. I'm kind of hungry. Yes. But um, explain to me why I'm looking at a taco and what all these circles and squares and triangles mean. Yeah. So uh, up top, you know, we're looking at, so just considering the uh, the black square, we'll call that the offensive center, the two dots to the right, two dots to the left, that's right guard, right tackle, left guard, left tackle. And then the Y and the H, those are two different tight ends. Um, so this is a question that we were talking about before is uh, why weren't we covering the center on those uh, like three or four quarterback sneaks when they had it short on the fourth and one. So what Navy ended up doing is uh, they ended up going what we call tackle over, uh, Akron taco tackle over. I don't know necessarily why it's taco, but it just is. Uh, so <laughs> I'm not going to argue. It's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see where, uh, so when they push that tackle over now it's tight end guard center guard. And that's tackle, just, tackle. if you're watching, that's on the bottom part of the screen now where you are talking about, right? So that's the taco version where you see to the right of the black square, you see the three, uh, unfilled, uh, circles. Those are, those are essentially, uh, the guard and now both tackles on that right side. Right. Correct. Yeah. And okay. that's where, you know, so that's where you see the gaps with the A, B, C, D, those all shifted over one now because that's where the, you know, so this, this was actually the formation that they ran on that first series. It was fourth and one. We end up, uh, they end up scoring, you know, they, they push into the end zone. Nice, easy QB sneak. We weren't covering the zero. We weren't covering on the center. Um, but the reason that we weren't covering it is because we were treating it as a new offensive center. Um, so that would be the next one. So that's what we're calling it, a knock, N-O-C. Um, that's the other acronym. We're declaring that that guard now is the center. The reason that we were doing that is because when they go unbalanced and they go off center like that, they can still run a, a myriad of plays, but we're trying to treat it. We're still trying to keep our defense balanced. So we decided to play everything one gap over now. Obviously, again, that's one of those things in hindsight where you don't want it. Um, and in and, and fourth and one on the goal line, we probably maybe should have been in some sort of like tough, some sort of like, you know, six gap, eight gap type of deal. Um, but we played it the way that we were playing it pretty much all game is we decided that we were going to put a zero over the center. But instead of the center being the true center, now the center was the guard. And that's where I shifted that for you uh, in that you know, in the diagram showing that that's yeah. who we were trading as the new center. So if you're looking left to right, where you see uh, the, the letter C B A A, if you look left to right between uh, essentially the, the B and the A there, that is the actual center. And as Andy's showing you uh, the defenders have moved between the C and B gap and between essentially the two A gaps there in the middle. Yeah. So that's essentially why your, your people saw an uncovered center and said, well, well, geez, that's genius. They're just going to ram yeah. the ball right through. But you're saying essentially what we're doing is we're, we're, we're honoring the fact that now they've got an odd formation and there's other options that kind of, kind of come out of that formation at this point. Right. So the natural question, Andy is, well, then you have to guess, right? You have to guess one or the other. So why not sell out and and take the you know take the the easiest path? And I'm 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 air quoting that because I have no idea if it's the yeah. easiest path. Take the easiest path of let's just stop the fourth and one quarterback sneak, make them work to the outside, and see if we can't get make, make something happen. Why not? Why not just shift that way? Um, because I think that looking at it, um, like what we talked about earlier, just how Navy or last week and uh, not earlier but last week, how Navy they're they're going to have those plays lined up already so they're going to have their inside the, the a gap play the b gap play the c gap play and they're just going to go checklist down the line if you're in one gap they're just going to push it over one they're going to make a little check call at the line so i think you know in theory if we were shifted over everything was covering the center then they probably are just going to run a different play they're either going to go sweep or they're going to go boundary they're going to go trap they're going to do something where they're going to start pushing over as well um so they're, they're very am, am i wrong in thinking that the further out you push them the better odds you have maybe of getting a stop even though still infinitesimal the further out i push them somebody slips and falls right you know somebody's elbow hits the ball like do i have am i wrong in thinking that my odds of stopping increase the further away i make them go yeah i think so i i think the the philosophical thing is do you start overloading that short side or do you start overloading the wide side where they have more blockers 
Um, Andy, I want 11 guys just right on the last screen. Yeah. I know people, I know you and I were joking before we started recording is people were like, well, let's just do the Madden thing. Let's just go punt block every game, every play, like yeah, 11 yeah. guys right on the line of scrimmage, right? Obviously that, that doesn't seem like it's going to work. Can yeah. you explain to people really quickly why, while in, on theory, putting 11 guys on the line, it seems like a great idea. Why in, in practice, it's, it's a terrible idea. Yeah. I mean, one guy misses where, you know, one guy misses, it's a house call. Um, you know, we saw that in the first series when we had that, or they Navy had the trap play that broke off for 40 yards. You know, we had one miss on the inside backer. Uh, he didn't fill the trap hard enough. And then all of a sudden they're running back, you know, full back. He was out the door. Uh, so that that's why we were keeping more backers and more safeties back than what fans wanted to see. You know, they were saying we need more D linemen. We need more people out there. Um, so that was, that was why in theory we were doing that. And again, why when they go tackle over, now you start seeing it's kind of one of those, do you start putting more people over on the wide side, on the on the blocking side, or do you put more people on the short side? Um, and, and that's – Navy's comfortable whatever you do either way. You're not really going to trick them. It's just, you know, are you going to be stronger than them? Are you going to be better than them, quicker to the ball? Uh, so finally on the last uh, – essentially the last fourth down of the game that kind of finally sealed it, we did decide to go that kind of that tight, that tough look. We went double A's. Um, you know, we're, we – Montalvo and Barber, they're both uh, chipping either side of the center. And unfortunately, it didn't end up working either. Uh, so, <laughs> so we we tried to go both ways. Um, you know, we tried to play it in our normal base, and then we tried to play heavy, and neither one really worked. So, unfortunately, that was a. Uh, you know, T. Will said it best. It's if you don't want to get beat by the fourth and one, don't get in. Don't let them get to fourth and one like that play we looked at before. If you could have stopped them on third and seven, now it's fourth and seven. It's a much much different play call. Man, it's just it's it's so great to to see these breakdowns, and uh, definitely I appreciate you for doing this because you know we look at a seventeen fourteen game, and you say, hey, you know, one play here, one play there, but yep. literally speaking, I mean, it is one play here, one play there. You know, yeah. something you know something breaks differently, and now you kind of see what the options were. Uh, definitely makes you go, man, like we were we were super close in, in some respects. If you know we block one guy, we make the right read. You know, yep. we throw a better ball, we make a catch. Uh, you know, this this certainly could have been a game. I know it's kind of the thing now where we want to blame somebody, right? It's kind of yeah. society in general. Blame the coach, blame the quarterback, right? But in this one, as you look at it, you say, hey, could we have done some things differently game plan-wise? Sure, maybe. But execution-wise, if we had executed what was called, you would have liked our chances of winning this game on Saturday. Exactly. Yeah, like, like we said before, it's I know fans were really asking, hey, why don't we run the ball more in the second half? You know, that's literally the option. It's run or pass. Uh, we, we just didn't run it maybe when we should have or a little bit more. You know, how do you neutralize that? Maybe we call a few more runs straight up. Um, but that's, again, it's now we're taking some of that anonymity out of it. And we're also, say if they decide to to blitz heavy like they were and we have a straight up run called and we don't have that option to pull it and throw it over the top, then, you know, you're kind of stuck. You don't want to run into eight guys either because you can't block eight. Um so that that's kind of one of those again it's philosophical issue of if you know that they're a heavy blitz team you're still giving yourself the outlet if you have the pass option off of that uh just one random thing and and i know everyone was making a big deal out of it we lost to a team that didn't complete a pass like would it have made you feel better if they did complete passes like yes (laughs) (laughs) Yes. i i I didn't understand that that one i'm seeing people like i can't believe we lost a team that didn't even complete a pass i'm like it would have been worse if we let navy complete 20 passes that would that would have been much much worse Uh, yeah i think the the insult quote unquote there is that basically like i think there's an assumption again i'm just i'll speak for the fan perspective that the run is easier to stop than the pass right so you know we couldn't even throw the ball they did was run you guys couldn't tackle the guy from running i think that's probably what the insult is on that one too um but it makes you wonder why isn't navy a better team like why do they only have three or four wins i watch them play i see what you what you drew up and you see the way that they can they can hurt you and it makes you go is it just simply just they don't have the depth they don't have the athletes is it is it simply just that that they're they're not a a better team than their record maybe indicates year in and year out i i think right now you know because both Prior to the last like three years, uh, Navy was one of, you know, they had like a 10 year stretch. They were one of the best teams in, in, in all of college football for about 10 straight years. Um, you know, they had like seven out of 10 years. They think they finished ranked. I mean, they went to like nine of 11 bowl games. Um, they were very, very good. Uh, still, you know, still, I, I had a ton of respect for a coach named Matalolo and, and what they're doing. Uh, he had a really nice moment. You know, he played in the, he played in the flex bone at Hawaii when he was quarterback. Uh, Ivan Jasper, their offense coordinator did as well. And then uh, uh, McKenzie and, and 
Coach Ken, they had a nice little moment too. Hawaiian quarterbacks meeting at the end. Yeah. And uh, I think McKenzie was committed there for a while or was, was definitely looking at, uh, it was either army or Navy, I think initially. I, I'm sure that him and, you know, I, I'm sure that him and Neil Matalola were talking just, you know, having a Hawaiian head coach and having uh you know, that, that definitely has got the cachet in the poll, I think, especially on the Island. Uh, and I think I heard him ask him if he was coaching because McKenzie was walking around with a headset Yeah, and, you know, he kind of said something like, are you coaching? And uh, so that there, you know, he was asking about that, but he was happy for him as well. Maybe we needed him to coach, Andy. Uh, you mentioned Navy's been good for 10 years. Uh, a team that's not been good for 10 years is the Cows. Obviously, yeah. the, the final war on I-4 comes uh, this weekend for UCF. Uh, obviously, Cows are 1-10. in 10. Uh, They are a team that, by all statistical measure, they're not great against the run. Your prediction, do we see sort of that Tulane-style heavy run offense again on Saturday in Tampa? I think so. Um, I, I think that... You know they're they're definitely going to have to blitz. They're they're going to try to steal some of that game plan from Navy. I'm I'm almost positive of it. They're going to try to trigger off of. They're going to try to use Holler a lot. Um, so it wouldn't shock me if we kind of go Tulane and then we kind of spread out Holler and we decide you know you're not going to key off him. We're going to spread him out and then you're going to have to play us more straight up. Um, because we can you know we can run out of gun. We can run out of wide. So that'll be fine. Um, I think that offensively, I saw USF start to do some. Yeah a lot different stuff last week than they've done almost any other time. They're going a lot of under center. They're going jet stuff. Uh, I think Brian Batie is going to have to work to the edges. And then their quarterback now, he's pretty accurate quarterback. First game looked very, very good. I think that that's mostly going to be uh, – what he's going to have to do is get rid of the ball pretty quickly because uh, I don't know if their O line is going to be able to handle our, our D line straight up for too long of a period. They also were running their quarterback a decent amount against Tulsa. I don't think that that's going to be their game plan against UCF just because of how big our D line is and just, you know, if they lose him, who's next up on the, you know, he was already fourth on the depth chart. I don't know what they have sitting behind him right now as far as who's healthy and who's not. So, I don't know how much they're going to do quarterback run, but I can see them trying to get Betty, uh, Betty, Betty, uh, you know, to the edges because he, you know, he's quick, he's fast, and that that's not our strong tackling point is on the edges. You know, it's no no team is great with corners tackling. Um, yeah. So I think that that's where they're going to try to get him, especially just because you don't want to go inside on like Montalvo and Barber, and uh, they they've been stuffing just about every single team in the run game. So I think that that's mostly what we're going to see out of them offensively. Well, again, JRP has already been announced by Gus as the starter, so perhaps we'll see some of that uh, more zone read, Tulane style offense uh, yeah. on Saturday against the Cows. Andy, again, as always, man, this is always fun, always illuminating. I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take an L on that quiz. I don't think I passed that very well, so I, I gotta study up for next time. So, uh, Andy won, Adam zero. If you're scoring at home, uh, no, on the, that on the, means on the I failed. If, if if you fail, okay, I'll take that. Yeah. Adam won, Andy zero. Perfect. <laughs> I love, I love how that flipped around in my favor, Andy. But yeah. no, we appreciate you as always hopping in, sharing your insight again. If you're not following Andy on Twitter at UCFXOS, you are absolutely missing out. Not only will he give you cuts of breakdowns, of plays, some things he sees, uh, he also uh, is apparently in the Mike Bianchi fan club, loves a good dinner with Timo, and may or may not be auditioning for the Cows head coaching job. So again, at UCFXOS on Twitter is where you can find Andy. Andy, thanks again for, uh, for hopping in, man. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Hey, if you guys go to the game, I'll be section 137. Go harass Andy, say happy Thanksgiving, and tell him uh, tell him we got to stop running that jet sweep. <laughs> it blitz too much. <laughs>